are you out here today? Uh, I'm out here because um, at some point you have to like kind of stand up and push back against people <laughs> who are like stomping on you. And so uh, typically I'm a police abolitionist. Uh, I believe in the power of the people. I believe in people uh, doing uh, for themselves. And so I hadn't really paid attention to all the things PHA was doing. I knew they were supposed to represent like housing in the community. And the first thing I noticed uh, was when a group of people uh, protesting against stop and frisk who were houseless decided to take over some abandoned properties and rehab them and live in them. PHA, along with the Philadelphia Police Department, came and told them they had to leave. And, you know, I understand that uh, maybe they didn't go through the proper means, but it would just seem to make sense that if they already did the work, if they already went through the effort, if they weren't harming anyone, these properties were already abandoned, that you either let them stay or find somewhere for them to be. But that's not what PHA did. So it kind of struck that PHA is really not 100%. Uh, about what their mission is or their goal is or how they're acting. Um, I know Nadira from many other protests and she has spoken many times about how she goes to PHA's meetings um, and raises issues because of PHA police which are not uh, official Philadelphia police and while I don't have any love for police at all in, in the city I can see them all go and be fine with it. PHA not being legally a uh, police force sanctioned in the city. They're, they're a private police force. Uh, however, PHA imitates Philadelphia police. So a lot of what PHA is doing with people on the street is illegal. They're, they don't have jurisdiction. They don't have the right to do these things. There's no legal precedent for it. They're simply harassing people and then turning them over to Philadelphia police who back them up. Um, and so that was like strike number two and then I found out that they burned down Nadira's house. Now, I'm not gonna act like, you know, me and Nadira are the closest people in the world. Like, I know her mostly from actions and movements. But you're not gonna be a foul organization beating down people with police, murdering folks, burning down houses. Like, I'm just tired of Philadelphia and this, this way of functioning as if, as if everyone in Philadelphia is a peasant and people with office jobs get to tell us what to do and run everything and our lives are unimportant and don't matter. I've watched countless uh, PHA employees come out of that building and scoff at us, right? Like they, there are a few who see it and they understand the stuff that's out here, the things that are written on these signs, they're not, um, they're not so far from reality that you can't believe them, right? Even if they seemed unbelievable, they're definitely true. So why wouldn't your natural instinct be interest, be curiosity, be wanting to know? They come out here be like that because they know. They know it's a problem, but because they're making money, they're not worried about it. And, and I know that there's, there's no way to fix that uh, outside of, of showing up in mass, showing up with groups of people, making demands on the system and then fighting for them until uh okay. until it's done um we call us as the campaign we out here hashtag occupy pha and i'm gonna do my best to support nadira and her efforts until either they meet the demands or pha is abolished whichever one comes first um, and how do, how do we go about meeting those demands? Like, are we asking for meetings, nothing. or do you know, like, what's the whole process? Well, that? currently, it seems like they're not even acknowledging her presence, right? So, the first thing would be to, to acknowledge that there is a set of demands that they do need to meet, uh, and that they can move on with that. I let Nadira uh, call the shots on that. I can't say what the next steps would be. Um, but definitely, until you, until they come out and say, look, I see you have a problem, what are your demands? How can we meet them? Then you're not even, they're not even trying. Right now they're not even trying. And really it's just a question of how many people are going to get out here, how fast and how bad it's going to get. Because typically they don't, they don't try, they don't respond until you stopped up all the streets, until there's a house or something burnt down, until you won't leave their lobby, 
until tons of police are out here because of the tons of people who are angry and making noise about it. So I'm gonna stay until they either get there or they meet the demands, whichever one comes first. Right. So they had the and are you born and raised in Philadelphia? Yes, I am. How does this make you feel as a Philadelphia? Oh my God, it's so frustrating. It's, it's infuriating. It's infuriating because like PHA is one part of a larger issue. Everyone in, P in Philadelphia right now is dealing with gentrification. We're dealing with uh, people with money coming in taking over neighborhoods and the people who live there for decades having to leave and having to go somewhere else. Often they got to go out to the suburbs and anyone in Philadelphia, I was just talking uh, about when people learn to drive. I didn't learn to drive until I was 30 because in Philadelphia people depend so much on SEPTA, so much on public transportation. What do I look like in the suburbs? You know, I can't function in the suburbs. You can't just uproot me and move me because you want to be in my space. That's inherently unfair. Housing is a human right. We all have the right to live in a house and be safe. And I live in Philadelphia. So since I live here and I have the right to be here, they don't have the right to act like this. And do you feel like your neighborhood is disappearing? Like the black community is like oh, it being is. pushed out and disappearing? Yeah. <laughs> yup. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, it's hard for me to talk about because I think my community like gentrification can be a, a slow process. It's recently been really fast in Philadelphia, but the community I'm from has been like kind of gentrified for a while. Like I'm in West Philly, and so they're pushing further and further up West Philly, but uh, the bottom area, that's been gentrified for a long time. And now they're pushing up, like I'm, I'm from West Philly, like Southwest, West Philly, like 60th Street. So now they're pushing up that way even more and more. They're doing, they're building things, there's more developments. Um, the, the people that live on 50th Street, like I lived on 50th Street for a little bit. The people that live on 50th Street is a complete 180. It's a complete different uh, set of people. And so I'm watching it like, like gentrification on steroids. Um, as a Philadelphian, I've moved around the city a lot, walked around the city, and I remember a kind of feeling of shock and awe walking down Montgomery and seeing all these like developed houses where there just wasn't like before there was like a lot of, even now in North Philly, there's a lot of um, blighted houses and stuff like that. And recently, they just like, they just changed all of them. That is all brand new houses uh, between Ori Feinberg and you know other development agencies. They just turn over really fast and it's causing tremendous displacement with, with black people, brown people, uh, poor people in Philadelphia. South Philly, North Philly, West Philly, Germantown. Like every part of Philly is going through like a, a insane amount of of uh, gentrification and, and displacement. So, it's frustrating. I mean, the thing is, you look at these pictures of all these you folks, there's anything. a lot of money in it. Um, like, they wouldn't all be coming if they didn't. Yeah, a lot of times I tend to think of myself involved in the battle for Philadelphia. Uh, a lot of people, like, once they get a little bit of money, they want to leave Philly and go live somewhere else. And I don't have no money yet, that's that's not what I'm saying, but, but I just don't want to leave Philly if I don't have to. Like, I want, if I would leave Philly, I want to be because I decided I'd like to live in another place and, you know, work in that place. But I like Philly. And I don't think anyone should have to leave Philly and live somewhere else because someone else with more money decided that, you know? So. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm finding so many different mentalities today. It seems hard. It seems, it seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, so, so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built. I was built for this. I think that I think we all have we all have a purpose in life. And mine's and mine's going to take on a task that most that most of back away back away from that impossible. Some people say it's impossible. I see possibility.